In this video, we're going to compute the electric field due to a uniformly charged rod of length L, where we observe the electric field at a distance of S from one tip of the rod at a location on the rod's axis. So to clarify what I mean, we have a diagram of the rod arranged with one end at the origin, or x equals zero, and we can see the observation point, which lies on the same axis as the rod itself, and it's a distance of S from the right end of the rod. Now to find the electric field at this observation point, we want to break the rod into infinitesimal little charge increments, and we'll call those dqs. Note that each dq will give us a rightward contribution to the total electric field at the observation point, and we call that contribution to the electric field dE. So our plan is to think of this little dq as a point charge and write down the electric field contribution of this point charge, but first we need to know how far it is from the observation point. So for this particular dq, we're going to say it has a location of x to the right of the origin. And this means there's a distance of L minus x between dq and the right end of the rod. That gives us a total distance of s plus L minus x between dq and the observation point. Now before we write down the electric field contribution due to this point charge, we need a quick reminder of the idea of linear charge density. So linear charge density is the charge per unit length measured in coulombs per meter. So we can say our linear charge density, lambda, is the total charge on the rod, capital Q, divided by the total length, capital L. We can also say the total charge is just given by lambda, the linear charge density, multiplied by the length. But this is also true for an infinitesimal segment on the rod. Anytime you take linear charge density in coulombs per meter and multiply by the number of meters, you get the amount of charge. And this is true for our little charge increment where we'll call the infinitesimal length dx. So lambda dx is actually another name for that little charge dq. So now all the setup is done and we can write down the electric field contribution of this little charge dq. So our contribution dE is given by the formula for the electric field of a point charge. This time our charge is given by dq. So we have dq over four pi epsilon zero times the distance between the point charge and the observation point, that's s plus l minus x, all squared. Now we can replace the dq with lambda dx. That's the linear charge density multiplied by the length of that little segment. So we have lambda dx over four pi epsilon zero times the quantity s plus l minus x all squared. So now our electric field contribution is phrased entirely in terms of a single variable x, and we're ready to add these up by using integration. Our total electric field E is given by the sum of all the contributions. Those are the DEs. So we write the integral of DE, and this is what an integral does. It adds up a bunch of continuously changing infinitesimal quantities to get the total. Now we just have to plug in our expression for dE. And we see that our dE has been phrased entirely in terms of that single variable x. So our limits of integration are going to go from the starting value of x to the finishing value as we cover the entire rod, chopping it into little dQs. So this starts at x equals zero and ends at x equals L. Now we can pull all the constants out in front of this integral to make it easier to look at. And I have a lambda over four pi epsilon zero out in front. And then we have the integral from zero to L of dx over s plus l minus x all squared. Now this might look really complicated at first, but actually we're looking at a simple power function type of integral. The only thing that's a variable in this expression in the denominator is x itself. Now that has a factor of negative one out in front of it because I have a minus x there. And that means the derivative of the interior function is negative one. And we can take care of the chain rule there by putting a minus sign into the numerator. We have to compensate out in front by putting a minus sign in front of lambda, but then we're ready to guess the antiderivative. When I integrate one over something squared, that's the same as integrating something to the negative two power. And that integrates to the same expression to the negative first divided by negative one. So that negative one produced by the antiderivative will keep that in the numerator. And I end up with the same expression to the negative first power, in other words, to the first power in the denominator. So I have a negative one over s plus l minus x, and we're evaluating this from zero to l. So when I plug in the upper limit, I replace x with capital L, and that cancels the l that was already there, and I end up with negative one over s. When I subtract the lower limit, 
that cancels the minus sign and I end up with a positive contribution. And when I replace x with zero, I get an s plus l in the denominator. So I have a plus one over s plus l. Finally, I want to distribute the negative one from out in front of the lambda. And I get lambda over four pi epsilon zero times the quantity one over s minus one over s plus l. Now this is a decent way to keep the answer. But before we quit, I want to put it in a little more compact form that makes it easier to investigate a limiting case. So starting from this electric field magnitude that we found, we want to combine those two fractions into a single fraction. That means multiplying the first fraction by s plus l over s plus l, and the second fraction by s over s, getting a common denominator of s times the quantity s plus l. So the s's in the numerator are going to cancel, and our numerator simplifies to lambda times l, and then our denominator is 4 pi epsilon 0 s times the quantity s plus l. Now we immediately recognize that that numerator is just the total charge on the rod. It's linear charge density times length. So I end up with a q in the numerator and a 4 pi epsilon 0 s times s plus l in the denominator. Now the only limiting case that I could think of to investigate for this particular problem is that when we get really far away from this rod, it better look like a point charge in its electric field. So we want to look at the limiting case where s is much greater than L. So we're way farther away from the rod than the length of the rod itself. That should make it look like a point charge. So in that limit, as S becomes much greater than L, it's in this term right here that we can make our approximation. We have an S plus L. If S is way bigger than L, then the L becomes negligible. And this leaves us with the expression Q over four pi epsilon zero S squared where s is the distance from the tip of the rod. Well, that's exactly the same expression as the electric field of a point charge if we're observing that point charge from a distance of s. So this is a really good indication that our solution is doing what it's supposed to do, and we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left, or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.